Alright, so tell me what issues in particular do you remember about, about this match? Um, I just... I farmed really slowly. Uh, I didn't get the Orchid until like 14 minutes and then Bloodstone came really slow, like we weren't really taking many fights. Uh, it felt like the Juggernaut was trying to just farm a, a shitload. And um, it just, we weren't really able to take any good fights. And I wasn't really farming very quickly either. Oh, and I messed up my block there, so there's that. <laughs> it's an Abaddon mid? Uh, yeah. Well, against melee heroes, the block doesn't really matter much, because melee heroes, first thing, they are usually pretty bad at harassing, exception is Monkey King. So, not only do you not need to worry about the block so much, you can also... One other thing you can do is you can move at the rune timing to the rune, and, and take the rune alone, the closest one to you, so that both of the heroes can go extra aggressive on their heroes. So essentially, by making sure you pick up this rune, you will increase your team's chances to get the other two runes, which in turn would speed up your battle. Okay. So the first thing you do, you should do as you approach the lane is you right click the enemy hero. Not only will this start the harassment process, but this will also get those creeps moving back to you, which will line them up in a position to either deny them or harass the Abaddon, Abaddon a little bit better and help you last hit a little bit better. The, the, the main point is to always aggro the creeps any free second you get. Should I hit him with the right click, or should I um, just get the creep aggro over? It's, it's usually both. I mean, as, as soon as you hit him, the creeps will automatically run to you. So okay. neither is mutually exclusive. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sure thing. As you do one, the other will happen. Um, can you tell me what was happening a little bit wrong with your approach? Um, I'm not shoving the wave, I guess, and I'm not being aggressive. No, at, at, at this particular moment. Um, I'm not using a remnant to farm. Which land creep is the most important? The range creep. As soon as you see the range creep in the deny range, the enemy sees it as well. And that's when the enemy will look to deny that range creep. And you want those creeps secured. So even even if you can even if you know you will be able to secure that creep, you must not take any chances. You must make it a hundred percent last hit. You cannot be greedy about the range creeps. Unless the enemy can can really mess you up with like maybe the shadow friend with the raises or, or any stunts. In that case you can be a little bit more careful, but in these situations with the Abaddon, other melee heroes like Kanka, just as soon as you see the range creep being in the deniable range, the first thing you do is walk up to him, do the remnant, do the head. Okay. Like this Abaddon, he's extremely passive, he doesn't even attempt at deny, but as, as you climb higher, the enemy will absolutely try to mess with those denies, and that's one thing you don't want to happen. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, I guess um, now that you mention it, I did play this lane extremely passive. Uh, I, I was just kind of, I guess, nervous or afraid of the shield. So I was like, oh, the shield could break and that's going to do a lot of damage to me. Like right there. <laughs> yeah, if you think about it, Abaddon, he's not any more dangerous than any other mid hero. If anything, him being melee already gives you an advantage. Like, the only thing he can harass you with is, is his Q, which is extremely ineffective, and his shield. But then again, the shield is just an average damage spell, which other mid-heroes would also possess, so 
there is nothing extra to worry about. So against Abaddon, I'm not sure how often you're gonna see Abaddon in the middle, but against heroes that don't have that much harassment possibilities, you should always be the one playing more aggressive than the enemy. Okay. Especially with the level 2 advantage, you should be spending every single second clicking him. Was that tower hit on purpose or an accident? Um, I think I just clicked it. I was like, okay, I'll just click his tower to be, I don't know, kind of annoying. Okay. I guess you don't want to do that. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to hit towers randomly now. Now, in these situations, like, you are running away from him because you are scared. Because you you have low health, he has the shield. So, at the moment he has the advantage, he can drive out into the lane. And your bottle is still 3 or 4 creeps away. So every second you spend being at this state with not having health, being afraid of the Abaddon, is every free second he gets to free farm and you're not doing damage. So when you recognize that you're gonna spend a good amount of time not doing much, just send yourself a salve. It will help you back on track and then let you play aggressively again. Also, there was, I don't think there was any need to buy Magic Stick. Abaddon is not really a hero that just spams spells any more than any other mid hero. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't too sure. I, I was going to ask about the stick. Yeah, usually, you, you itemize to get those key items as soon as possible. In this case, the bottle. If you would have not bought a stick, you would have bottled by now, and this situation, which I have talked about, wouldn't even have happened. You wouldn't be on low health and afraid of Abaddon. Okay, uh, one more thing, one, one thing about the Vortex Campo is that as soon as you perform it, you want to walk, walk past the enemy, because as he's being vortexed, he does not, he cannot block you. It's free pathing. As soon as you click the vortex, you want to move past him, and that essentially puts you in the advantage uh, position. You can block him. You can deal more damage that way. If you block him enough times, you can actually block until the remnant comes off cooldown and actually get a kill. In this situation, he. What you did was okay, because he does have the shield, he currently has the advantage for you, but for the future, like any other hero, or if your health would be bigger, as soon as you press the vortex, you can move past the hero, and this way you will do more damage. So yeah, the biggest problem right now is that you recognize that you are at a disadvantage, but you have took, you have taken no liberties to actually fix it. Like what I talked about, one thing was the cell, which would allow you to play aggressive again, and the second thing would be you have enough gold for a bottle. You had enough gold for a bottle for quite a while now, but you're not keeping the eye on your gold and items available for purchase so that's that's uh, again that's time you're spending not fixing this position of a disadvantage Denied. there we go now we got the bottle You also don't want to cast Vortex for nothing. Usually Vortex is reserved when you want to do proper harassment or maybe disrupt his last hitting, ideally for the range creep. But if you cast Vortex, 
just because it is off cooldown. It, it is the incorrect play. You should always save Vortex for it when the advantage is there on your side or when you are actually disrupting his movements. So was this a good game to get Vortex or should I have gone the 202 build that you talk about in your YouTube video? The thing is, on paper, you would absolutely go for Vortex, you would play aggressively, you would drive this Abaddon out of the lane because Storm absolutely destroys this matchup. But because of the mistakes we have talked about, you are at a disadvantage and you have been for a while at a disadvantage. And when you know that there was a disadvantage, disadvantages, disadvantages position, in that case you gotta you gotta think about your item build like if you know that you may have made some mistakes and you no longer have as good a kill potential on the enemy mid as you did before, in that case you can rethink your item build and say, skill build and say, hmm, this isn't working out, I think I'm gonna go for the farming build and I think this applies here as well. Like You notice how you're forced to play passively. And then you can decide for yourself, okay, well, I'm not going to bother hitting him, I'm going to bother hitting Creeps. So you, instead of skill Vortex, you skill Remnant. So to answer your question, on paper, you would absolutely do Vortex in reality, because this match has shifted out of your favor, you now should go Remnant. Did that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. All right, cool. Because the Abaddon has six tangos and a self and a magic stick. Because yeah, because he was allowed to gain all this advantage. You can you can absolutely forget about taking over this matchup. So yeah. The only thing left for you to do is to out farm him. Because this kill lane is no longer a kill lane. It's a farm lane now. So, in this situation where you want a farm lane, you will want to make sure the creeps are being positioned in favor for you. So, in this situ in this particular second, what you do is you, you secure this creep, which you did, and then immediately block your creeps so that they end up on your high ground, which will allow you to take those last hits more safely and securely. But now they meet in the middle, and that's not so good for you as it could have been. In the end, Abaddon is still pretty, pretty passively. He forgets about the range creep. You forget about his range creep. You can't even say out. Feels Crusader, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a lot of very common mistakes from both players. If you would if you would try to get into the habit of checking enemy's items, you would see Abaddon being absolutely prepared for all this harassment. You would forget about even using Vortex because you're just wasting mana you could otherwise use on the jungle creeps. Right. Yeah, I need to start doing that. I do it sometimes like when I'm ahead. It's a lot easier because of course, you know, you you have less to think about, but when you're behind, it's kinda like every decision is it's just huge, it feels like. Yeah. I mean, even in this match, looking at the network scale, somehow you're still ahead of the Abaddon. I guess he just can't last hit properly. But as the lane status, you're still losing this lane. Right. I think I was almost also intimidated a little bit because... Um, I, at this game, I think I was Crusader 3 and he was Archon 2. 
So I kind of went in, not really tilted, but like, okay, what's going to happen? I see just some little anxiety on your part. Yeah, that's a better way to put it. Anyway, uh, looking at this moment, as, as you're approaching this rune and taking this battle recharge, there is no need for you to use the cell because you have no mana, you will want to use the battle anyway, and with the mana will come HP. Abaddon does not have any nukes, and there is no reason for you to top off your health pool. If this was Shadowfriend or Lena or Skywrath Mage, yes, you would need to stay as high as possible because they actually have combos they can threaten you. Abaddon's damage is really, really passive. There is no threaten of kill. If he starts going heavy on you, you can always fall back. So, self isn't necessary here. <clears throat> you said the stick wasn't necessary. Um, are there lanes? Which lane would you get a stick with? Skyrat? It's the lanes, yeah, where, where the enemy will have to land spells and the lanes where there is kill potential. So the point is to accumulate those stick charges to have it ready at level 6 when you want to kill the enemy. Because they will restore a lot of mana which will help the kill along with the mangoes. As for the heroes, those would be Shadow Friend, Zeus, Skybrap, Shur, Lena possibly. Those heroes can all be killed at level 6 and having a stick or the wand at high charges will definitely help the kill. So, as so far I have talked about all the storm related gameplay mistakes, but there's still very a lot to talk about, like player mistakes, which are unrelated for the hero. And I'm, I'm just gonna say, you will need to work on your laning practices, either with the bots or the demo mode, or just studying YouTube guides. Because your lane control is so far non-existent. Same for the other guy. So, so the sooner you will get the basics of the laning down, the sooner you will start winning more lanes and start winning more games. So, the, basically, good laning practices is the foundation which you will need to climb the MMR. Like I, I, I can definitely break down your storm games and, and help you with storm related things. But, but the currently the basis for the for your losses and wins that could have been easier wins is definitely that you are way too passive in the lane and you're not using all the capabilities that the creep aggro provides, that the rune provides, that the vision provides. And then there's unnecessary movements like being aggressive when you don't need to, wasting mana on vortexes that do nothing, stuff like that. So, so what I'm saying is, uh, sure we can talk about storm. I will point out the storm mistakes, but what I think you should focus on, then of course things I can help you with is the basic laning. Okay, that sounds good. There has been many moments in this particular match breakdown where I think you saw it yourself, you weren't exactly sure what you wanted to do. Yeah, and I played like a weird, I don't know, like defensive, but I don't know, hoping for aggression that just never, obviously never happened.
Yeah, we'll have to fix the fundamentals first. Alright. So this was a, a lane that I didn't really feel like I did terrible in, but I guess um, from what you're saying, yeah, I did, did pretty bad. And then also, I guess uh, you said to level Remnant, and I leveled the um, Overload. Yeah, usually Overload is reserved for the kill lanes, which did not happen in this case. Is there anything else from this particular replay for the landing phase you want clarified? Uh, no. Um, you kind of explained, because I, I didn't really die or anything, but like my farm was just really slow still. So I, was, I couldn't figure out why, but everything you said kind of opened that up to me. Yeah, one more thing is that uh, when the enemy does not have kill potential on you, in this case Abaddon, you can actually play two ways. You can play it as a kill lane, which you kinda did here, and you can also play it as a farm lane, which means maxing uh, the remnant. Because Abaddon, he cannot do nothing to prevent you from pushing those creeps and going jungle. And every single time you push those creeps and you go jungle, Abaddon has to chase those creeps under his tower. So he doesn't have time, he doesn't have the wave clear, he doesn't have time to de push, which means you will always kill the wave and kill some jungle creeps, which means he, he will only be able to kill the lane creeps. And over time, this accumulates to you winning the lane purely through economy. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Okay, let's go over to the second match. So, uh, I will try to put you on the right direction of thinking by trying to directing your thoughts the right way. So would you say Klinks is a hero that harasses a lot? Yes, absolutely. What should you do to minimize the time Klinks is spending harassing you? Uh, pull the creeps under my tower? That's one way, yes. Basically, you will want to make sure those creeps die as soon as possible so that your creeps are pushing in and Klinks has to chase those creeps. If he's chasing those creeps, he's not hitting you, he's not harassing you as much. So yes, one way is to make sure your tower helps kill those creeps. This isn't ideal because the tower will also mess up with your last hits, but the surefire way is to simply hit the range creep a few times, press Q, range creep dies, last hit secured, and then do the same for the remaining melee creeps. So what I'm saying is, the first wave, always use our mana to kill the wave as soon as possible. Because as long as you're just walking here, doing a right click every 5 seconds, that's all the time for clanks to harass you. Okay. Even so, this wave didn't go as bad as, bad as it could have been because you had the high ground advantage, so he missed a few hits. Yeah, I missed two creeps there, so it's still pretty bad. I think level, um, when he gets level three, it, it's lane over for me. I just, it, I fall apart and just leave it. I think I give the lane to a witch doctor at that point. Yeah, so we'll talk about how and why did it even get to that point where we had to leave the lane. Because Klinks is not the hero that can easily drive Storm out of the lane, unless something goes horribly wrong. So, one of the things that went horribly wrong is right now, instead of your level 2, instead of hitting Klinks, who has no armor, no HP, what you do is you head back for absolutely no reason. 
you could have pushed your advantage. If you run at Clinks, what do you think he will do? He's either going to back away or he's going to hit me. You have two creeps with you. Will he hit you? No, I guess he'll back away and try to hit the creeps. He'll back away, yes, because the creep damage plus your damage will be too much for him to make sure the threat is worth it. So in, in the end, what's end what, what ends up happening is those two creeps will hit him under his tower, and ideally the next wave will also meet under his tower. And when the wave meets under his tower, this means the tower pushes this wave. This means the next next wave will also be moving from tower to tower. All of this means that he does, simply does not have time to harass you. But instead what happened is you gave him the perfect positioning, the high ground, where tower does not reach your creeps, and you cannot harass him. One way to fix it is to simply head down, use the aggro, get those creeps on your range creeps. Clinks at level 1, he still does not deal that much damage, you can easily trade with him. So that, that's for the laning thing. Now, quick notice about items. Why did you buy this recipe? Um, I wanted more damage, I guess, and I wanted, uh, I guess, just built it out of habit. Yeah, you always gotta think actively about the items, not passively. Like, wh what do you think is more important? Having the region available to you as soon as possible, or having plus 3 damage? The region, for sure. There you go. Same with boots, you always want move speed, because it will help you navigate the lane better, uh, help you reach the runes, help you teleport and go back from base. The null talisman is only bought, the recipe is only bought after you have the other essentials, which is bottle and boots. So just like the last game with the self, uh, with the magic stick, which was unnecessary, right now you're wasting your gold on null. Which, which is also is unnecessary. And then you simply walk into Clinks' face, which is also a big no-no, because as you're walking, a good competent Clinks will just right-click the hell out of you. So, as you're walking and hitting him with the overload, you're dealing, what, 100 damage? But as you walk forward and back, he will deal 300 damage, because you are opening yourself for this damage to be done. You will only walk up to do the right, to do a aggro, and get those creeps on your creeps for better positioning. Would you say that the proper skill build here, in that case, would be to max, to go for the um, remnant? level that more so that I could shove the wave and it forces him to um, last it under tower? Against Klinks it can go both ways. With the overload and good late positioning you can actually out trade him because he has no health and no armor. But if you can see that Klinks has better time controlling the lane, if you sense and see that harassment is not an option. In that case, yeah, you will absolutely want to max to make it a farm lane and max out uh, remnants. And right now at level two, there is no need for you to go to the side camp. He he still cannot do much to you. You can still walk up here, right click him to get that creep aggro back. What I'm saying is this lane position, they are in the middle, it is very very fixable, as long as you just walk and aggro the creeps. There is no reason for you to jungle at all, at the moment. 
Is he just AFK? I'm not sure. <laughs> well, he is playing very passively. Against these kind of opponents, as long as you get the basics of laning down, you will win your lane every time. Okay. Like if you had more mana here, you could have absolutely traded with him because you had the creep advantage, which means you would have done more damage to him than he would have done to you. But you have spent all your mana hitting those creeps very inefficiently because of the low level. And again, this Snell Talisman made sure that your battle arrives late. Now, once the creeps are under his tower, there is no reason for you to even come close to Clanks, because eventually those creeps will run to you to your tower. So what would you do right here? Just wait it out, man. Just wait it out. Okay. Instead, you choose to trade against Clanks, who will have evasion and creep advantage and the tower region. That is neither time nor the place to trade. The place and time to trade was the first two levels. And those first two levels, you did everything but trade. Well, I mean, yeah, all of this is, all of these are very fixable mistakes. Yeah, I guess I did the opposite of what you wanted to do. Like I said, as long as you practice some laning techniques, you should be able to manipulate the lane better, to recognize the opportunities where you can trade, when you shouldn't trade, and as soon as you as soon as laning starts making sense to you you will be able to lane better laning better means winning more lanes and winning more lanes means winning more games it's all about laning right well i guess that that probably helped a lot because i like i said i mean i felt i felt that i was losing it in the first two minutes see like that's as soon as um as soon as you saw me kind of stop on the way to that jungle camp, I got on mic and I was like, "Which doctor you can just have mid? I'm I'm done." <laughs> okay. Even at this point, this lane is still very much salvageable, as long as you can keep the waves bouncing between towers. Yeah, actually, um, at one point I think I come back and kill him, and I was kind of shocked that I was able to do that because I guess mentally I was just like, "Okay, Clinks is just I, this guy's beating me. I don't know what to do." I mean, yeah, at this at this MMR, everyone is not exactly sure what they should be doing, so as long as you have a better clue, you will climb. Yeah, uh, that was kind of like a... These games are kind of like a string of kind of tilt sessions for me, like a little bit of a losing streak, but I've actually, like, I, I kind of took like a day or two off, and I won, like, I won a lot of games after that. I, was, I only played Storm for one, but... It went perfectly. Like uh, I was against a TA, which was a hero I used to play against a lot. You know, when I, I used to play this game a couple of years ago, um, so I was very comfortable with the harassing. Um, so I, I actually have I gained uh, 280 MMR since then. I'm now uh, 290. Sorry, uh, 2090, which I know is still not that great, but. I feel like I, I definitely knew that there was a problem because of these games, and that's why I contacted you. Like, before I was like, okay, maybe, you know, just bad games, you know, not ideal. But after these two matches, I was like, okay, there's definitely something I'm doing quite wrong. Yeah, as, as you climb further, you will meet opponents that are 
way more experienced at actually controlling the state of the lane instead of flowing passively with it. So you must yourself also focus on your ability to read the lane's status and manipulate it to your advantage. So the main takeaway from this chief would be for you to invest a lot of learning resources into understanding how the creep aggro works, when to trade, when not to trade. And then once you get the basics down, then we can actually focus on the storm part of laning, like uh, what what itemization to do, what spell build to do. Well, like I said, the main focus should be the basics of laning. Have you got any other questions then? <clears throat> um, no, honestly, I mean, you... You open my eyes like I was like the blind leading the blind. Like I was asking people for help, but they're like at the same rank. So it's like they don't really see all these mistakes that, you know, for you, it's just like, oh, what are you doing, man? If you see it. Um, so I, I guess I did have a maybe an odd question. So I, I find like if I play off lane, I'm able to just almost just do whatever I want. And like I'm able to do all this aggro and whatnot, even if it's like me solo versus two. Um, I'm not really a mid player, but I, I really like Storm a lot. He's fun. Um, is am I able to like have this success in the off lane because I'm able to aggro, or is it just I don't know? They're easier characters, easier matchup. Maybe I, I think the reason you're having success in the off lane because right there in a two versus two scenario, the lane will naturally be much much more chaotic so there's there's much less of an emphasis of controlling the lane because it will be much harder controlling the lane because all of these spells going around all of these harassments will make sure the creeps move back and forth uh, the more experienced players the higher mmrs they go yes they will be able to control the aggro better by by abusing the aggro range as they go for harassment and also pulling the small camps the big camps but the entire nature of the offlane will make sure the creeps are always moving and and there's less emphasis on lane control in the mid lane the mid lane is all about the lane control so the the, sum, the summary is that the lane control in the offlane simply at this MMR does not exist, but in the mid lane, it's there, and it's the match deciding factor. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so basically, I'm just falling into success. Basically, so I'm not really doing anything right. It's just no one else is doing anything right either. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, I mean, if if you continue improving on the mid lane, if if you actually work on on the homework I said, like learning the Aggro patterns and management. I, I will actually link you a, a good resource. I, I, I think I did. I did a video on all the seven topics you will need for the mid lane. So I'm, I'm saying if if you will pursue this mid lane thingy, this will definitely make you a better player everywhere else. Everywhere else. Okay. I'll definitely yeah. I'll, please link it to me. I'll watch it and I'll practice and contact you again for sure all right then in that case uh we'll end the session now if you have any follow-up questions you can always write me in the discord so yeah thank you and good luck okay thank you very much have a good day